All right, the number one factor contributing to women saving less for retirement is time out of the workforce. I wanna go through some pitfalls or some avalanches or some hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever natural event you wanna put on this. I wanna look at some of the things that single ladies, all my single ladies, single ladies and single men need to be thinking about when retiring. So we've got Sharon, she's 61 years old. She has about $500,000, a little more, save for retirement. She wants to retire at 61, and she's asking the question, can I retire and will my money last forever? So let's go through this scenario right now. All right, so here we go. We've got Sharon single. Now, Sharon makes about $70,000 a year. She is an admin, okay? And she wants to retire at 61 years old. So we've got about a year before we step into retirement. So we're already thinking about how do we protect these assets so we don't face the volatility if there's market loss. We're gonna get into that here in just a second when we talk about sequence of return risk with retirement investing accounts. But I really want you to be thinking about where's my runway and how much time do I have before I retire and are my investments allocated for that time frame, right? If you've got 10, 12, 15 years, you can be a little bit more aggressive. If you've got 10, 12, 15 months, you don't wanna be as aggressive. So we've gotta have investments matching our time horizon, right? Okay, so Sharon at 67, her social security would be $2,970. Now obviously, if she takes it early, if she takes social security at 62, she would get $2,079 per month, which she could do. She could start claiming social security at 62. She would get 70% of her full retirement benefit. Now, claiming at 62 is a great thing to do. A lot of people do. The majority of Americans claim their social security at 62. What we want to focus on, does it make sense for Sharon to claim social security at 62 as a single lady? Here's the reason I'm talking about that. Social Security at this point is the only guaranteed income with a COLA increase that Sharon's gonna have. So we need to maximize her Social Security because as her life goes on, if she runs out of retirement investments, if she drains her 401k or her IRA, that's not coming back. Social Security, in its essence as it is right now, will continue to pay her a check every month for the rest of her life. So we wanna think about maximizing Social Security to protect her retirement income, especially as a single person, because your retirement income is on me, myself, and I, right? And so if she takes it at 62, it's gonna be $2,079, and that's where it's at. It's, it's there. Now, you get a COLA increase on that every year. It's about 2.58% is the average right now. Well, let's just say 3% over the rest of her life, but that's the, that's the base. Now, if she claims that any time after 62, she's gonna get a bump. At 67, this is her full retirement age, it would be 2,970. She was born after the year 1960, so her full retirement age is 67. At age 70, she would get 124% of her full retirement benefit, which is 3,683. Now, what we're gonna do in the software is we're gonna assume she's gonna take it 67, and then we can look at the differences there. Does it make sense to take it 62, 63, 67, 70, whatever. We're trying to maximize this for her individual plan, okay? So let's go out of Sharon. Well, let's go to assets. So from an asset standpoint, we've got $15,000 in the bank. This is her just normal savings. We've got $275,000 in an IRA. Now, I want you to notice it says Quadro. So Sharon has been divorced, and so she got half of her ex-spouse's IRA. That's called a quadro. So she got $275,000 in IRA money, which was half of her ex-spouse's uh, IRA. Now, she also has a 401k of $225,000, of which she's contributing $1,166 per month. Now, keep in mind, as a divorced spouse, she also has the ability to claim Social Security benefits based on her ex-spouse's earning records. She could do that, but her Social Security is actually higher than her ex-spouse's earning record, so she's not gonna claim off of her ex-spouse. Now, her ex-spouse could claim based on her record if it makes sense, and I don't wanna get into divorced Social Security benefits on this video. I have a video 
in the archive. Go to the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. Click on the search bar, type in divorced social security benefits, and I go through a detailed strategy if you are divorced and you want to claim social security benefits. But for her, it doesn't make sense for her at this point. Now, protected assets, she does have a home worth $325,000. Now, from a rate of return standpoint, we're going to be very conservative when it comes to her rate of return. And what I mean by rate of return is, what are these investments going to earn in the stock market or in the retirement investment vehicle that they're in? So if it's in the bank, obviously it's not going to earn 6%. Now, it might for a time if it's in a money market account or something, but over time, what's that average going to be in the bank? So we're going to use 2% for the bank. For her IRA and the 401k, both of those are in the market. So we're gonna use 5% and 4% for the rates of return for those investments. Now our house, we're just gonna do a 1% rate of return for the house. Obviously real estate, depending on what state you live in, I'm in Florida, I'm in the Tampa Bay area, and our real estate did this. And then it's kind of like So again, wherever you're at, I just don't know how to project that out. So we're just gonna do a 1% rate of return. Plus she doesn't plan on ever leaving her house. So it's really gonna be there for like a reverse mortgage or something like that if we need it. So we're just trying to get an idea of what the rate of return would be on that. If you want a financial EKG, if you wanna meet with us and go through a comprehensive strategic retirement plan for you, just go to our website, pearlwealthgroup.com. The information is below if you'd like to schedule some time with us. There's, we have a great download on our website. Do you have a plan to keep your finances on track? Download that. You can also go and get right on our calendar right over here where it says schedule a visit. Okay? Cool. Now, from an expense standpoint, we've got about $3,900 in expenses. We have a $700 mortgage payment because she's had this house for a long time. So her rate, her interest rate is low. So it's pre the Federal Reserve raising rates in 21 and 22. And that mortgage is going to end in seven years. Now, keep in mind, a mortgage has 0% inflation, right? So we don't have to calculate inflation on a mortgage. Her baseline expenses are $2,700. That's everyday cost of living for her as a single lady. And we have travel of $500 a month. Now notice on both of these expenses, we have inflation, 3.27%. The travel expense, we're gonna end in 2038. So basically she's gonna have $2,700 plus $500 in expenses on a monthly basis. Now travel might not be monthly, it might be a one-time thing through a year or twice a year. I just like to itemize it on a monthly basis. So we're gonna have these expenses, and then at a certain time in her life, 700 is gonna fall off, right? There's gonna be the mortgage, and then 500 is gonna fall off. And so we wanna see that in our retirement income plan. If we just threw in $3,900 and gave it a 3% inflation rate, that's gonna kill her overall plan. So we've gotta look at this in a more detailed and complex way so that we can give Sharon an accurate idea of, hey, where's my retirement income gonna come from? How long is it going to last? How do my investments need to be allocated to pay me my retirement income? And what can I do with my money or what can I expect my money to do in retirement? Okay. Now keep in mind what the software is not doing is it's not updating that 2970 with the COLA increases, but we're also not working for six years, right? When you look at your social security statement, it's assuming that you're going to work until your full retirement age. So as a conservative planner, I don't want to add any COLA increases to social security unless Sharon says, hey, Drew, here's my new social security statement. This is what they're saying I'm going to get maybe at age 63. Then we can update it. But I want to be really conservative. If it's higher than what the software is showing, we high five, we chest bump. That's great. I don't want to be too aggressive in my projections and it comes out down here and we're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Okay. So for the first six years, all of her assets or all of her expenses are being paid from her retirement investment. So here we are, net monthly income, net monthly income, net monthly income, net monthly income, that's working. And then we retire. So you see, here's our working income and we immediately switch to taking out money from our retirement investment accounts. That's our retirement income plan. So boom, now we're taking it out. So you can see, again, in 2024, her taxes stayed really low. Go to 2025, we're still really, really low, even though we're using a 401k and an IRA for retirement income. That's why I said tax planning is not something we necessarily have to worry about. Now we could do Roth conversions and, and look at different scenarios for her to do that because she's in a low tax bracket, it would help but we don't have a whole lot of non-qualified 
liquid money. What I mean by non-qualified, I mean not IRA money, not 401k money. We only have $15,000 in the bank. If we're doing Roth conversions, I want to have a bucket of money that I can pull from to pay the taxes that's not IRA or 401k. The reason for that is if we pull money out of a 401k and an IRA to pay the taxes on a Roth conversion, we're essentially double taxing her, like doing the Roth conversion and then taking taxes and being taxed on that. So it's just pushing up our brackets. You see what I'm saying? So we want to have that extra bucket. We don't have that. It's not a bad thing. We just don't have it. And I want to go through two, um, I don't want to say pitfalls, but two things I really want to focus on because it's Sharon single. The first is long-term care. So Sharon's by herself. She's in Ohio. All right, there's some kids there, but she's essentially on her own. So home health care cost, community assisted living and nursing home. So let's just assume she wants to stay in home. Because she's single, we're gonna have to have somebody in the house, whether that's gonna be a child called informal care, whether that's gonna be a sister, a cousin, whatever, somebody's gonna have to take care of her or a nurse. So let's assume it's gonna be a nurse. So homemaker services today are about $5,000. So let's plug that in, 4957. So what's that gonna be when she needs care at 80? That's the average age people need care. 9,176 with a 3% inflation rate. So you see that? That's today's cost. That's tomorrow's cost. We're still doing pretty good. We could always add in part-time work. We could always add in work in an extra year, but this is a pretty good scenario. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is stock market risk. Because I think with stock market risk, we have to understand that the market's not gonna move in a geometrical pattern, right? It's not gonna just move at 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%. I wish it did, make my life a lot easier, but it's gonna move like this. It's gonna move like Space Mountain at Disney World, right? Okay, I've been on Space Mountain, Mount Everest, rock and roller coaster, Big Thunder Mountain, whatever the roller coaster is at Disney, I've been on them all. That's like being in the market, right? Like you know you're gonna get off, but you don't know when you're gonna get there, right? Like we're gonna do this loop, we're gonna go around this bend. It might be dark. There might be loud noises. Eventually we're gonna get off. We just don't know when we get there. So we gotta put her plan through a meat grinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume, we got two sides of this. We're gonna assume 4% over here and we're gonna assume 4% over here, but with randomized rates of return. Now I don't know the future. I had a glass ball. I dropped it coming into the office today. It smashed everywhere. That was a heck of a mess to clean up. But what I can do is I can say, what if we have a really crappy market? Look at this, this is pretty terrible, right? Sequence of return risk to start off. Now sequence of return risk is the risk that you step into retirement and the market falls immediately. Now what that means is the market's going down, you're pulling out retirement income from an investment that's going down. So you've got this double loss going on and in order for that money to go back up to where you lost it, you've got to make double what the market lost, but you're still using it for retirement income. So not only do you have double loss going down, you only get one bit of gain going up because you had to pull out income. That sequence of return risk, that's something we got to look at. So now we come here and we go, oh my gosh, we're out at 82 instead of 92. 10 years, whew, 10 years. Let's generate a new plan. This one looks pretty bad, four bad years in a row. People are like, ah, oh, the market's not gonna have four bad years in a row. It did back in the Great Depression. But look at this, we actually get 86. All right, so let's generate another one. Here, another four bad years, all the way to 2062. And look at this, we're out of money at 100. So that's why when you do Monte Carlo scenarios, it's anyone's guess what the market's gonna do, right? It's anyone's guess. We've got to pay attention. That's why it's so important for Sharon to always be doing reviews, to always be making sure that we're updating this EKG, we're updating our investments for where she's at, for where the market's at, and for what's going on in her financial life. So I hope this has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless, bye-bye.